so many of us right now have come to understand exactly how messed up and corrupt the world is. I don't need to even explain what I mean when I say that. I'm talk obviously I'm talking about the governments, the, the media, the propaganda, the healthcare system, uh, all of it, the education system. I don't need to go into detail because you already know what I'm talking about. But this, what I want to talk about here is, is you know, how do we go on with our lives? How do we think about uh, our future? You know, what, what do we do in this situation where we feel like we see how everything is so dishonest and fake and, and against us, right? So nothing is supporting our health and our well-being. And so what do you do when you can no longer trust the authorities? You no longer believe the news sources uh, or even, you know, what you're being taught from institutions that you, that you should be able to trust. So a lot of people are waiting for the world to change, hoping for the world to change, hoping there are some white hats or good guys that are going to come in. And, and this may very well happen, and I hope it does, or is happening, and I think it may, may be that it is. But my point is, is much more on a personal level, that the danger here is that is that we are giving too much power to the external world. So, you know, when we see that, how the system is totally corrupt, that authorities cannot be trusted, we're projecting outward to the world and, and essentially saying that, that um, it's hopeless, that, that we're screwed. What are, what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to, you know, let's assume it gets worse and worse and worse. How are we supposed to uh, be free? How are we supposed to, to speak freely, to, to make money, to earn a living, to support our families, to buy groceries, to do whatever we need to do? And, and we're, we're saying that unless we can, unless this, this horrendously corrupt system changes, we're screwed. Well, what I want to talk about is is how we're fundamentally, this is not true. Fundamentally, we're not screwed. Um, I like to look at the, the system of the world that we're talking about, you know, the man-made systems of the world, institutions, corporations, centralized institutions, religions. This is essentially what might be called um, the ego. <laughs> now, normally we think of the ego as something that is in our minds, the way we think, you know, the voice in your head, the separation from God, um, fear, you know, these concepts of ego. But what, I'm, what I'd like to point out is that, is that the ego within our minds did not just arise there naturally. It was, it was put there through this system. So we've been conditioned by this world. We've been conditioned by these systems that have always been there since we've been born. You know, we're, we're given a, a social security number and we, you know, we, we were forced to go to, to, a, to an institution called school for many, many years to sacrifice our time, sacrifice what we actually want to do, what we're interested in, and be force-fed what they want us to, to, to learn. Then, we're, then we have to support ourselves, we get jobs, we pay taxes to a government. We never agreed to any of this. You know, and then the, the media, the movies, condition us to relationship models, um, assumptions about love, what love is, and what, what, what a family should look like, and what dating looks like, and, 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 and you know, what's beyond the, what's beyond the, the boundary of what we should consider for our lives, you know, what's normal. And, and of course, the news media frames everything in such a way that there's a, um, you know, that, well, they lie, right? So our understanding of, of the world events is not accurate. Uh, the, the version of history we're given uh, is not accurate. So my point is that this ego mind, you know, our understanding of reality, our, our, our belief that we're dependent upon this external system, which to some extent we are, but I'll, I'll get to that. You know, this is, this is what, what the, the ego mind within us is essentially what happens when you align with the belief that this is legitimate, that it's real, that the system around us is, is even real, that we depend upon it, that we cannot survive without it. And to some extent, it's true that we have to play the game of life. 
And I'm not talking about that. We have to do things to comply with, with, you know, with taxes and with business laws and, you know, basically how things are done because otherwise you just end up uh, in trouble. But what I'm talking about is, is are you complying with your, with your faith, with your belief, with your thinking? You know, are you free from the ego? And, and, and if, and if so, if you can be free from the ego mind within you, your own ego mind, then you are, are by extension, you're, you're, you're automatically uh, detaching yourself from this corrupt system and you no longer can be threatened by it. Now you might think to some, you know, a lot of people I think are just awakening now in the past, you know, since, since coronavirus, when everything just went insane and it's increasingly insane day after day, we think, this is the end. What are we supposed to do? Well, you know, a lot of us have, been, have have awakened a long time ago. For me, it was it was the 9/11 propaganda that happened after 9/11, and the way that the governments lied and, and went to war and, and, and things. And I began to see the whole the whole matrix, the whole system back then. And I made a decision way back in 2003, four, five, um, to to detach from from my. I no longer believed authority, anywhere from doctors to, to media to teachers and so forth. And so I needed to learn how to live in a way that I could, that I could be free with my time and, and my thoughts and speak freely and live according to what I know to be true and also earn a living. And I assure you that, that, that it's possible. In fact, I've, I've had, a, had relative abundance. I never had any real worries about money, despite the fact that I've been been living abroad and, and American living in, in Slovakia uh, for all that time, speaking the language not very well, and and yet I've been able to to make to earn a living and and basically avoid being plugged into this really socialist communist. Uh, government around me. It's always been this way since I've been here, doing everything legally, but 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 being free within a system that is just messed up and corrupt, right? And what I want to the message of the positive message of encouragement is that you don't have to wait for for things to get better in the world. And I hope that it does get better. I believe that it, that it will or that there is this battle going on to make it better. But by all means, we cannot be waiting for that moment that everything's okay in the world. I don't think the world was designed to be where everything is okay and fair and honest. I mean, I hope we get there. And I think the only way we, the only way we do get there is if people like you and me go through this personal awakening that I'm talking about here, which is transcending the ego mind. And we do that whether or not the world changes, we each have a job, a mandatory, uh, you know, assignment in our lives given to us by our creator or by the divine that we have to um, see the false. We have to look at the false, the, the stupid ways of thinking that the world teaches us, the dishonesty around us the way we're exploited by these institutions for their own perceived gain, the way we're controlled, the limits put on us, the way we're so unfree and, and, and disrespected and lied to, and we have to see it. And as we see it, we have to, we have, to have a spiritual practice of meditation to learn to observe the thoughts, the insane thoughts that were planted there. Sounds like the voice in your head, but it's actually the world's conditioning through through everything we, we, we've seen and experienced. And obviously some kind of spiritual practice, whether it's reading a, you know, a religious book like the Bible or, or, or you know, Bhagavad Gita or whatever it may be, or whether it's something non-traditional like A Course in Miracles, uh, or, or Eckhart Tolle or, or Deepak Chopra or, or these people, some kind or the best would be to, to choose a range of, of, of these materials and do some kind of studying every day, listen to speeches, listen to audio books, read some, and begin to bring, bring to life the eternal ideas of, of truth. 
which is that, that, that love, it's essentially the message of love, unconditional love, forgiveness. The idea that we shouldn't sacrifice truth. We should be always honest and want truth. We should be accepting and forgiving of our brothers and sisters and ourselves. We should recognize the mystery of life. What is life? It's, we're not mechanical uh, beings. We are divine beings. We don't know, we don't understand with our mind, with science, uh, what is this thing called life? And if you think about it, um, the fact that you're even able to observe your thoughts, like who are you observing your thoughts? You're able to observe this reality. What is that being? What is that consciousness? It's not your mind. It's, it's above your mind because you're able to observe the thoughts in your mind. You're able to um, shut off those thoughts and still be observing the present moment. So as we go within, the freedom is found within. Love is found within. Now, once you find it there, then you can extend that into the world. You can experience love properly, unconditional love with another person or people. Um, you can transcend fear. In fact, it's all or nothing. If you have some fear of the world, you're not, you're not in this place. You're not, you've, not, you've not solved the problem yet, right? You've not um, escaped from the ego. You've not spiritually awakened. Um, it's not, the outside world is not the problem. It's our, it's our, it's our alignment with it, our faith and our belief in it that has been the problem. And as you begin to look at the illusion, look at the lies, understand that they're everywhere, that then you can begin to trust your own intuition, trust that you're good, that there's nothing wrong with you. You're not guilty of anything. You might have made some mistakes, but those can be corrected. And you realize that actually there is no threat to your abundance because you have value. You're able to create value and do things for other people. And that's what the source of value is. If you're able to create a product and sell it or, or put together a service and sell, people will pay for it if it's valuable and if, if it's what they need and want. And as that happens, you are going to make make money are going to have some degree of abundance. So it's not about like complying with a job. In fact, let the, let the whole idea of having a job go start a business and just start doing something that, that you feel called to do. Try to find some customers, design something, create something. And, and, and that, in this way of thinking is that's where I went where, you know, I don't want one source of income because it's, it's that I'm dependent upon. I'm fearful of losing it. I'm controlled by that entity giving it to me. So I have a business where I have at least five or 10 or 15 sources of income. And then you have investments and other, other sources of income. Okay. And same thing with relationships. You don't want to let some one person tell you how you're going to live or what you, who you should and shouldn't be, what you should and shouldn't say, what you should and shouldn't want or do. So in relationships, understand that because you are good, because you are loving, you're able to to be honest and open about your needs and, and your feelings and what you want in life. And it's okay. And if you're honest about it and loving about it, then you can have it. So my point is choosing freedom, breaking away from this system. If, you, if, if you're allowing someone who's, who is controlled by this egoic system of, of, of thought, i.e. You know, a partner who, who wants a normal relationship, and you're going along with it, well, then you're you are you're buying into that to the matrix. You're buying into the the media version of what love is supposed to look like. That you know the MTV or the you know the the music video version of, of love and, and and the pop song ideas of give me give me give me boy and girl and this kind of stuff. Right? You're not going into what love really is. So when you know when you see the truth, you have to live the truth. If you're not living it, well, then you're you're actually choosing to continue to go along with um, the system. But if you do choose to live in truth, what I'm trying to say is that, is that you don't have to ever go to the doctor because you are going to be healthy. You're going to be meditating and your body is going to be healing itself. You're, you're not going to fall for, for, for prescription medications. Of course not. You're not going to eat unhealthy food for the most part. You're not going to get into some kind of terrible addiction for the most part because you're, because you're in a good place. Um, you're going to be brave enough to break a few rules that are 
totally unjust and wrong, like lockdowns, right? You're going to get out in, into nature anyway. You're going to do what you want to do anyway. And you're going to be okay if you can't go to restaurants or can't travel for a while while the world's messed up because, because you're at peace, because you're, everything's okay in your, in your life. You're not going to have suffering and conflict, right? You're going to have healthy relationships, family, friendships, and you're going to be happy in a room by yourself. So what I'm trying to say is where, where's the problem here? Like, what are you waiting for? The, I do hope the world changes because this isn't right, what we're living through right now. Everything is so messed up. But the, the, the positive thing is so many more people are seeing this. You know, I, my brother and I have always been, like, totally here and here and disagreeing on everything um, in terms of, you know, our, 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 our faith, our, our ways of seeing life and our, our value system and, and so forth. And now I've, I've been watching his videos and they're, they're a lot like mine. He's saying, I, I agree with everything he's saying. I don't know whether he would agree with me or if he's watching mine. Um, but my point is that even people from uh, who, who used to be just completely opposites were coming together through, through the, the great awakening, the, the recognition of what I'm saying here, that it's not me trying. You already know it. I'm not trying to convince you of anything because you already see it. But I think the piece that a lot of people are still missing is that is that we should not be waiting for the world to change, that we can begin living in freedom and truth in abundance and love and health within, within this corrupt, sick system. Because we've been doing that, a lot of us have been doing this for a long time already. It is getting worse, but at the same time, um, you know, I've I've not, I've never had a PCR test. I've never complied. You know, I, I'll wear a mask at, to, in the grocery store because it's totally required in Europe. They would throw you out of the grocery store, you know. But other than that, like it hasn't, you know. I don't need to go to restaurants. There's no, it's no problem, you know, um, or hotels or, or or whatever. So you know, it, it is very much possible um, to be okay now. And the only way to be okay now is is to look at ego and understand that ego is within you, but it's also conditioned in you by the world. And when you see the whole picture and you do choose to let go of all fear, align with love. And, I, and, and you know, my, my basic belief system is very simple. If something is perfectly loving, which means unconditional love, if it's freeing or, or if it's a situation or, or, or a message or a thing that, that is in favor of personal liberty, um, then it's good, right? It, that is something that's that's good. If, and then the third element of this is is it honest, right? Is it is it honest? So does this entity or this person or institution do they want full honesty? Are they fully honest and transparent? Um, is their message one of love and their actions loving? And 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 is it freeing? Is it allowing me to 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 go on my journey and, 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 and do my, what I'm here to do in life, right? So if something meets all three of those criteria, a relationship, um, you know, a message, a religion, a, a book, a person, institution, um, yeah, it's good. It's very simple. If it doesn't meet one of, if it falls short in one of these areas, I'm out. I'm, I'm not, this is not what I agreed to, right? So it's, it loses all credibility for me, right? It's not legitimate authority. It has no truth. Right. So, yeah, that's it. You, know, you could say it's just just perfect love is one thing because part of perfect love is, of course, perfect honesty and openness, acceptance, forgiveness. Right. And, and freedom. So it really is. I'm, I'm talking about the message of love. But but I want to be totally clear to mention honesty, truth, honesty and freedom, which is we all have life itself is free. The soul wants to be free. We have free will. So anything that allows this, I, hey, I'll, I'm all in. Anything that doesn't allow it, I, I think it's illegitimate, and, and I and I do not uh, place any compliance with it or faith in it. So that's kind of yeah, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Like let's you know let's keep waiting for to see what happens. I love watching this system collapse. It's just collapsing, isn't it? But. Let's not wait around for that to happen and for, 
for Nassara, Gisara, or whatever, the, you know, the QFS and these wonderful things that are supposedly happening. Let's not wait for that to start living because we, we only got one shot at this life, right? So let's just do it now. And if, and if we, and if, and if this personal process is something you've not, you've not gone through or, or, or don't think you have to go through, even if the world does change, um, unfortunately or fortunately, uh, this is the mandatory step for everyone, whether or not the world is better or worse. So I'll leave it at that. Thanks for listening.